Hey everybody, this is John Buck, back with another Continuous Time Linear Systems video. In this video, we're going to talk about linear time invariant systems and causality. As we saw in the stability video a second ago, if I have a linear time invariant system, the impulse response tells me everything I need to know about the system, so I should be able to deduce other properties like stability and causality from the impulse response. We've already dealt with stability, so in this video, I'll talk about causality. And uh, let's just go to the whiteboard and get right to it. So we say an LTI system is causal if the output only depends on values of the input for the present time and earlier times, that is the present and the past, not looking into the future. So the criteria for that is very simple and very similar to the one in discrete time, which is that we need for an LTI system to be causal, the impulse response must be zero for negative time. And this property or this, this criteria for determining causality from H of T comes directly from the impulse response uh, or directly from the convolution integral. So I'll, I'll take just a moment to show you where this comes from, though it's more important that you understand how to apply it than to be able to derive it. But it's still useful to know where it comes from. So here I've written the standard convolution integral in the form where we, we make x, of, x the delayed version and, and h, just h of tau. Uh, but, but this is important because it reminds us or makes it easier to see where the criteria comes from when I write the convolution this way, right? Because we're letting tau go from minus infinity to plus infinity. So this is telling us, well, we want to avoid any, we want to avoid any value of x where the argument is greater than t. Well, the argument will be greater than t if tau is less than zero, right? Since if, if tau is less than zero, this t minus tau is actually greater than t, which means the argument of x is greater than t the time we're looking at the output for, right? We're trying to find the output at some time. So if the value of t is three, right, we'd have y of three is equal to just, for instance, nothing magical about three, but we'd have y of three is equal to the integral of h of tau times x of three minus tau, well, for all the negative values of tau, that would be some time in the future with the argument greater than three. So we don't, we can't let any of those values influence the output. Well, how do we keep them from influencing the output, right? We keep them from influencing the output if h is equal to zero, so that the weight, the scaling that gets applied to all these future values must be zero. Setting h equal to zero means that time <clears throat> will not, that version of the input won't have any impact out effect on the output because it's been multiplied by zero and, and removed from the convolution, right? The integral gets simplified there. So anytime h of tau, any value of tau where h of tau is equal to zero, then x of t minus that tau gets scaled by zero and does not contribute at all to the output. So that tells us that, well, if we want to get rid of all the ones where tau is negative, we just set h of tau equal to zero for all the negative ones. Right, so if we set h of t equal to zero for all t less than zero, then y of t, the output, only depends on the present and past values of x of t, not the future values. And so therefore, that's the definition of causal. So that makes the system causal. Okay, so let's look at a few examples now. So again, here's, here's an example impulse response. h of t is minus 3 quarters t plus 3 halves between minus two and two, right? So again, I've, I've sketched this impulse response here. And, and again, the figure is very helpful when you're doing these causality de determinations because th just looking at this, we can say, well, h of t is definitely not zero over here from, you know, here's t equals zero. It's not zero from minus two to zero. So therefore the system is not causal, right? So. That one's very, very simple. And again, just to highlight the guilty party, the, the problem in this, the thing that keeps it from being causal here is this section here on negative time, the system is not zero. Okay, let's go on to one more example. How about this one? Is this, is, is this system causal? Well, again, pause the video for a second, think to yourself and get your own answer. And then I'll tell you what, I, I'll tell you the answer and you can check your intuition against the actual answer. Okay, now that you're back, looking at this, it's very simple. We look at, again, sketching it makes it easy. For a negative time, this unit step is always zero, right? If t is less than or equal to zero, then I have the unit step for, you know, I'll have minus four or even less, 
Well, u for a negative argument is zero. So in this case, the system is causal. Okay, so those are uh, two examples. Causality, most people find a little easier than stability because you basically just have to look at whether something's zero or not, but it's still easy to get confused. You have to be careful. We'll do lots more examples in class to work through that. But again, just rolling the credits as, as I finish up here. The main idea for this video is that if we can tell if a linear time invariant system is causal by looking at its impulse response, and particularly if a LTI system is going to be causal, the impulse response needs to be zero for t less than zero for all the negative times. Okay, so that's all for this time. I'll see you in the next video.